It is ring season. Happy ring season, everybody. I am off to Hempstead Lake State Park here on Long Island, and uh, we're going ring hunting. I'm walking my way to a metal detectorist crossing. They've got a sign. Sometimes cars don't stop. Oh, they, this guy did. Thank you. See, that sign worked. Down to the lake. So welcome to Hempstead Lake State Park. Uh, this is a beautiful gem in uh, Hempstead, Long Island. Ooh, and even the water is uh, pretty nice. A little cold. And yeah, a lot of people go swimming here. And you know what happens when people go swimming. So before we start metal detecting together, I've got a few tips uh, for you for hunting lakes specifically. It's very different than uh, hunting an ocean beach. I am also debuting my White's Beach Hunter 300, which is a pulse induction machine. And I've used it for about two years now. I'm very familiar with it and uh, pulled many rings with it. So um, this is kind of a home environment for me, uh, both with the machine and also with the terrain. I've been to this park many times. I've had a lot of uh, success there. And I want to share my observations and uh, what I've learned from hunting this. Tip one is simple. Use your eyes. I once spotted with my own eyes a gold ring with a diamond in the exact lake that we are metal detecting today. So one of the things that I've struggled with is getting targets in my scoop. For instance, the more submerged that you are in water, the lighter that you are. So imagine trying to put your weight down and pushing the shovel with your foot. It's really tough to do. So what you might want to do is to sweep with your foot. If you've watched some of the underwater metal detecting channels, you've seen them uh, kind of sweep with their hands. You could do the same thing with your foot. It saves you time if you see the target. Point three, this is the important one. The swim area. Where an object is dropped, it will barely move in a lake. Whereas in a beach, you have tidal movements, you have waves, and it eventually gets pushed onto shore. That's not the case here. So you have to think where people are going to either lose things from their pockets while they are swimming, or where they will lose rings, for instance, because their hands shrink uh, when they are swimming. So you want to basically be in that swim area. That's where all of these drops happen. Now this is just three pennies, but your sweet spot is just along the shoreline. Let me get this wire out of the way. Just along the shoreline where uh, people can start to be submerged. Uh, there's very few that go further out, but there's definitely a ring drop zone that is just off the shore. When you start getting scoops with multiple pennies in them, uh, or multiple objects that of value, you know you're in the right place. One last point before we go and hunt. So lakes are repositories of water, and the surface levels of the lake changes based on rainfall and uh, the storage of that. So on one day where there is somewhat of a drought when there's less rain than normal, uh, you're going to be able to uh, have very low water in some of the deeper swim areas. If you're detecting like me, you know, with a, uh, a beach scoop uh, in this, those are the days, those are the golden days. That, that's the equivalent of low tide, uh, drought season. We're in the opposite of that uh, t detecting uh, in this video, but uh, and it doesn't matter if you are a scuba detectorist, but for what I'm doing, droughts help you quite a bit because it gets you out into that swim area a little bit further where the drops are. And you don't have to worry about your weight because like I said, you might have to experience this to fully understand what I mean. 
when you are neck deep in water and you're trying to step down on your scoop, oh man, that is hard. You're going to see that in this video. All right, we're going pulse induction, White's Beachmaster today. First signal. It was just a uh, bottle cap. What I do with that is I send it to shore. Watch this. And I collect those later. Nice strong signal here. Let's see if I could get it for a scoop. I think I got it. I thought I saw a ring for a second. Nope. Well, Heineken's a strong beer. Let's send that to shore. Just made it. Whew. Another one. This one sounds a little bit deeper. So basically the pulse induction, I've got a box right over here. It's got rings iron and coins. Yellow is for rings, coins is green. Of course, uh, the pull tabs and nickels, you know, those all fall within that uh, range. And you go by ear on this. It, it's very different than a very low frequency or multi-frequency machine. And I see it, it's a bottle cap. At least I'm saving the earth. First pull tab of the day. Joy to the world. That goes in my pocket. It's a fish! Well, that fish seemed to show me where the first coin is, because look, I got a green signal. Let me dig. I'll be back when I get it. Alright, I think I got it. Survey says... Oh, I did. Zinkin. Wah, wah, wah. Deeper coin signal, this one is a uh, purple dime. If we, It's gray too. If it was all gray, I would say, hey, maybe this is silver, but uh, it's got purple in it. Um, that's a sign of copper. Got a really nice signal here. Really, really nice. And it's uh, yellow. Got it in my scoop first time. Well, what do you know? It is, I think, a ring of some sort. The coloring for being under the water is right. Now, I don't know what this is. It sure rings up like a ring. All right, we're deep here. Might as well let you see.
Nope. All that trouble for this. Vintage pulled head. Got a fishing weight. Got an amazing sounding signal. Got a nice penny here. 1969. Alright, 50 years old. Old school beer cap. So welcome to the submersible zone. This is uh, me trying to balance as I am pretty much neck deep in water. I have my GoPro on uh, pretty much at uh, around where my uh, belly button is. So that is submerged. And uh, as you can see, it takes a lot longer to retrieve the targets at this depth. So I'm going to be doing some serious editing. Uh, I'll make sure to show you everything that I got at the end of this video. Might be a weedy. This might be the coolest find of the day. It is a spoon handle. Looks very, very old. Cool. So I'm going to share with you the earring trick, because I think I might have found an earring. Now you see these holes, they are just smaller than dimes. And I have an object that I just scooped that I think fell through. So what you do is you put your detector underneath, and when you swish it, you'll know if something fell through, and yes it did. It's not an earring, but it's a fishing weight, and this fits through the holes, and that's what happened last time. So if you put your detector under it, you know it went through again. And it also helps to have a shovel that uh, has smaller holes on the side, uh, on the shore. 
I don't today, but uh, just a helpful trick if you keep losing your stuff. We are starting a new tradition. See that? Yeah, that's Taco Bell right there. Love Taco Bell. Any day that I get a ring, and today I got two, um, we're gonna celebrate with Taco Bell. That's just the appropriate thing to do. So, yeah, I'm gonna order, and um, yeah, we're gonna celebrate. Hi, could I get a number four, please, and a bean burrito? Um, I'll have a lemonade. Yep, that's fine. All right, I got my Taco Bell, and I'm heading home, and I'll show you what I got. So, <laughs> this is what you could get in one day digging lakes. Uh, this is the trash. And this is the coins rings so we have a car probably not a classic because uh, this is plastic on the bottom although these sometimes have dates I just can't see it now two spoons one looks a lot older than the other uh, this is stainless steel I'll probably use it for electrolysis um, pull tabs, uh, beer, all sorts of stuff. Um, I tried counting 136 pennies. Isn't that insane? Got a buck fifty in quarters. Yep, one dollar, buck fifty. Got a bunch of dimes, and uh, this one especially. I'm gonna try to tumble tonight. I can't see a date on it. But uh, just the way that that looks compared to the other ones, uh, it might be silver. Like, this is what a typical dime looks like. So, uh, I will tumble that, and you will soon have an answer. These are the rings that I found. Um, nothing too special. Um, although it's glass, it's kind of nice. And it's uh, it, it, no engravings on the inside. And this one is just a... Uh, a uh, fancy finger ring goes on like that, but um, I've never found one like that before. Mystery object, which I'm going to tumble, a bunch of fishing weights, uh, the hood of a uh, matchbox car. Uh, I, I tell you, I mean, you, you really, uh, and I left a lot of signals behind. I mean, even as I, I dug about three hours to get all of this stuff. And there were tons and tons of targets that I left behind, and I was just in a small part of uh, a really big lake. So that's uh, that's what I found uh, in about three hours. Anyway, thank you for watching, and uh, more videos coming soon.